Your next guest sees today maybe as a certain longer term buying opportunity. Let's combine the markets, the Fed, and just some school named Georgetown. Paul McCulley is PIMCO's former chief economist, now teaches at the aforementioned Georgetown's McDonough School of Business. And he joins us now on the fast line, no doubt, champing at the bit to get in on this conversation there, Paul. Uh, Tim Seymour, I had terminal rate and the under. I'm, I'm, I've Georgetown lost alone, bet. by the way. He's referencing terminal rate going up. How closely connected is the Federal Reserve money supply and the ability of stocks to go up? How connected are those things? I think the connection is a whole lot closer to the policy rate than the money supply per se. I think the money supply slowing down and actually going down is reflecting uh, a slowdown uh, in overall uh, demand for credit, particularly for leverage and so forth. So the big issue for me uh, is the policy rate. Uh, and then, two, how does the yield curve respond to it? Uh, so I think that we're almost finished. Uh, the tightening process. It's either going to be a little bit below five or a little bit above five. But I think we put in the highs for longer term interest rates, the yield curves inverted, and it's time to start thinking in terms of, yes, a pivot, not in the distant future, but probably by the middle of the year. Oh, OK, agreed. And I think the debate over rates going up is probably over or really darn close to it, Paul. So let's define pivot. By the way, maybe our Wordle starting word tomorrow for everybody out there. There's two pivots. There's the pivot to cutting rates with the Fed, and there's the pivot to just not raising them but not lowering them and keeping the rate and the terminal rate and everything high for a lot longer than many people expect. Which one would you be looking for? Well, you actually will have both. They've got to stop before that they can reverse and cut. Uh, so you get a pause, then a pivot, the two Ps, if you will. Uh, and I think they will actually be not that far apart. Uh, and uh, I think the pause uh, will be the catalyst for uh, renewed risk appetite. Uh, and then the pivot will be the turbocharger. All right. So you heard our debate between equity markets and rates. I'll kind of go back to my first question, Paul. If the Fed stays where they are for a while, is tech toast for a while for the same length of time? I'm not sure, because the Fed can find a plateau and tell us that they're going to stay there for a while. But I don't think the yield curve necessarily will be uh, singing in harmony, uh, I think it will become even more inverted uh, as the Fed uh, finishes this tightening process. And I would suggest that growth stocks and the market more broadly uh, is going to be uh, keyed off of what's going on in particularly the five, seven, and ten-year part of the curve. And if that portion of the curve can maintain and uh, itself and actually have lower rates, uh, then you just have a higher inverted uh, yield curve, but the equity market uh, can get a grip. Hey, Paul, it's Karen. Thanks for being on, and Happy New Year. Um, can you tell me what, in your, in your thesis, what are you thinking inflation has to be at to allow the Fed to pause and pivot? I don't think it's a level. I think it is uh, manifestly going down, disinflating uh, uh, across a broad spectrum. Uh, and Chair Powell has already effectively told us uh, this in the sense that uh, we've seen goods starting to disinflate in some places deflate. Um, we're seeing the housing market uh, do the same. Uh, and the third bucket uh, for Mr. Powell is services away from housing. And he looks at that being driven by the tight labor market and wages. Uh, and that's the last thing that has to cry uncle. Uh, and when it does, then the Fed's finished. Uh, and this uh, nightmare of 22 will very much be in the rearview mirror.